13 investigates reporter Sierra Putman tonight is comparing these two bills and breaks down the similarities that are still a big focus of debate. It's very important that you spell it correctly. Two weeks into the session and one of three controversial school bills is already dead, in part because of this conversation between the bill's author, Senator Scott Baldwin, and a teacher testifying against it, worried it would negatively impact history lessons. We don't stand up and say who we voted for or anything like that, but we're not neutral on, on Nazism. We take a stand in the classroom against it, and it matters that we do. Senator Baldwin said he's against Nazism, but... We need to be impartial. Again, I'm going to use this term. We need to be the purveyors of reason. We just provide the facts. The kids formulate their own viewpoints. After that exchange, the Senate president said there was, quote, no path forward for the bill. However, senators may be open to similar bills if they can make it through the House. Last Friday, I think everyone was glad to hear that SB 167 was declared dead. Um, it feels a bit like a shell game. Um, while we have to, while we we're excited about one, we're watching kind of a twin bill over in the in the House. There are two similar House bills, but she's talking about HB 1134. 13 investigates compared the amended House bill to the dead Senate bill. They're not identical, but do have some exact language, including this passage preventing the teaching of anything that causes, quote, discomfort, guilt, anguish, or other form of psychological distress on account of the individual's sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, national origin, or political affiliation. Both bills also say schools cannot provide ongoing, quote, services for mental, social, emotional, or psychological health issues to students without parent consent. It feels very out of time. Touch. They also allow families to sue and have similar penalties for potential violations. Teachers voice loud opposition to the creation of committees to review teaching materials and requirements that they'll have to post more teaching materials online. It almost feels um, a bit like a bill in search of a problem because as a parent, I already have a voice in my child's education. Echoing concerns we've heard from several other parents worried these bills will dilute education and scare teachers away from Indiana.